Hey children, welcome to our Sunday school today at Beaches Road Baptist Chapel. I know it's very different. We miss having you right here in our Sunday school room. Well, you might see a little bit, a few familiar things around me, but we're going to get started here with the very first thing we should always do when we come to Sunday school, and that is a word of prayer. So let's join together in a word of prayer. A, B, C. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity this afternoon to be able to look at the Word of God and be challenged just for a few moments to memorize God's Word as well as hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against Thee. I pray that You'd help every boy and girl that's listening to truly determine in their hearts that they know the Lord Jesus as their own Savior. Lord, please help us and guide us in these next few moments in the Sunday School. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with us, and we are so thankful that you're here, a part of this Sunday School today. And we want to encourage you to invite your friends. Next week, we're going to have Sunday School just like this, and we'll have some opportunities and some different things that will be happening next week. So we want you to make sure that you're tuning in each Sunday at 3 o'clock. And we hope that this will be a real help and encouragement to you and your family and we're so thankful, and we are praying for you. And uh, we are thankful that we can join together as a church and pray for you and your family as well. So please let us know as well if you have any prayer requests, and maybe next week we can pray about those things. Well, I have my friend Lucy here, and she's going to come and help us, one, learn a new Bible verse. But then I think she has a special song to go with it. So you get ready. Hope you're sitting up straight. Here comes Lucy now. Hello boys and girls. I hope you're as excited as I am for our Bible verse this morning. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. And if you can open your Bibles and read along with me. It says, He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So we can learn in this verse things about our great God. And first we can learn that he's a rock that we can trust on him. On him. He's something that is solid. We also learn that he's perfect, that there's no, nothing wrong in him, there's no iniquity in him. And because, but, but we also learn that he's a God of judgment, and we're not perfect, we're full of sin. And because he's a holy and just God, he must punish us for our sin. So we learn he's a God of judgment, but we also learn that he's a God of truth, and we can find that truth in the Bible, in the word of God. And we can learn that he is just, and he is right. We're going to learn a quick song to help us learn our memory verse today. So I hope that you'll be able to sing along with me. Maybe you can stand up and get ready to sing. So we can start from the very beginning. Are you ready? He is the rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Just and right is he. Just and right is he. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. I hope you can carry on learning this song at home. And I think Mr. Mullins is going to come back to tell you something else. Very good. Now, I'm going to ask Lucy to come back because I think you need one more go at singing that song one more time. I really like that song because we're not only learning a song, but we're learning scriptures. So she's going to come back uh, right now and be able to lead us in one more time. So I hope that you're ready, clearing your voices, <clears throat> and get ready to sing it out there at home. All right, Lucy, come on this way. I hope you're ready again, and maybe we can sing even louder this time about our God, who is our rock. So we'll start from the very beginning. One, two, three. He is the rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Just and right is he. Just and right is he. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Very good. Well, children, I hope that you have a copy of God's Word. And maybe we can work on that song even next week. And uh, I hope that you'll work on it and practice it all this week. You can go back and watch the video time and time again. And maybe, if you get a chance, maybe you can record yourselves at home singing it. We would love to be able to see that 
And that would be really great if you want to talk to your parents about that. If you have the Word of God, take it with me to the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 6. And we're going to look here at a particular story that some of you may know a little bit about of, but some of you may not have heard or maybe you forgot a few details. I want you just to think about this word right here, judgment. This word judgment. Now, God's judgment is a very serious thing. And many years ago, there was a great judgment that came to all the earth. And it was called the Great Flood. And it was during a time where there was a particular character of the Bible who was saved from this great flood. Does anybody remember his name? Do you know it? If you said Noah, well done. And so we come here to Genesis 6 and we'll begin reading in verse number 5. I hope you're following along there at home. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them." We have something that's very sad, is that God created all things, and they were perfect, but man brought sin into this world. You know, the truth is, is that we all have sinned. That's this word, iniquity. You know, God is without iniquity. So when he has no sin in his life, when he sees us and we sin, it makes him very sad. And here, he was very grieved, the Bible says, when he saw all that man was doing one to another. I have a picture here that helps and reminds us about what might have been happening during those times. And we have this picture here, and it's a picture of people fighting. And we see these people, they're yelling at one another, they're a, a being very angry at one another, hating one another. You know, we see a lot of this today. Maybe you've been angry at your brother or sister or your mom and dad or maybe a person at school or somebody else and you wanted to fight and, and you maybe said things you shouldn't say to one another. You know, these things are sin. And God has judgment for sin, just like he had for them. And he saw all these folks that they were fighting one another and there was great sin throughout all the earth. So God said he was going to judge the earth. So everyone would be affected, but there was one person. The Bible says in verse 8 of your Bible, I hope that you see it there in Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So we find here this person named Noah. So in all the world at that time, there was a man named Noah, and he found grace in the eyes of God. Now, grace is something very amazing that only God can give. Grace is something that we get that we do not deserve. You know, Noah sinned, yes, but he had a desire to worship and trust and believe in God. And for that reason, he knew of God's grace. I wonder, do you know God's grace? Do you know his forgiveness? Have you trusted in him? I, it's a very important thing as we see, first of all, the judgment that was upon men and upon us. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. We are all going to be judged. But do we have grace in God's sight? The Bible says that these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. That means he was upright. He tried to do what was right because he believed in God. And Noah walked with God. You know what? After we come to know God's grace, it's important that we all walk with God. You know, there's many ways we can walk with God. We can read his Bible, pray every day, and when we're able to, come to church. These are all ways we can walk with God. But also, we obey him. And so Noah was given a great commandment in order to save himself and his family as they sought to follow God as well. 
And the Bible says the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God was going to bring judgment. He was going to send a great flood. And so and this was the fashion that shalt make it. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. And God began to talk about something that he needed to make. God told Noah and described to him something very specific. Do you remember? I hope that you do. If you don't, it was an ark. And so God told Noah the designs for a very special boat that would protect him and his family. It was their deliverance. It was their salvation to save them from the judgment of God that was upon all sin because Noah trusted and walked with God. God was going to save him from this great flood. Well, next week, we're going to find out as he begins to build this massive boat that had all of the animals of the world that were going to be able to get on that. You might say, well, how is that possible? How can you build a boat that big? Well, I hope that you'll listen in next week and we'll see the second part of the story of Noah. But I want you to remember today that God is a God of judgment and our sin must be paid for. But Jesus Christ paid for our sin. And if you'll trust him by faith, he can save you too from your sin. Maybe you could pray even today asking the Lord to save you from your sin. Let's pray here together. And we want to thank you for joining us today in Sunday School. And we hope to see you next week at 3 o'clock. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the Word of God that Thou hast given us. We're thankful we can memorize the Word of God. And pray that You would help every boy and girl, especially during this time when we can't be together like we would want to, that You would encourage them and help them to walk with God. May they each know the grace of God and forgiveness of their sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we'll see you next time here at the Beaches Road Baptist Chapel Sunday School. Thank you.